Hello, I'm Steve Nunn, President and CEO of The Open Group. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, where we highlight the various components and leading experts of the Architects Toolkit, a collated portfolio of the most pertinent technology standards for enterprise architects. During the series, I'll be calling on a number of recognized experts who will bring their particular insights on how to most effectively use the various tools in the Architects Toolkit. We'll have a mix of interviews, panel sessions, and pre-recorded presentations along the way. While all standards of the Open Group are designed so they can be adopted independently of one another, the greatest value for an organization can be derived when they're used in unison. The sum of the parts should be greater than the whole. In the Architects Toolkit, we have collated a portfolio of the most pertinent ones for architects together, all in one place. For most of these tools, certification from the Open Group is also available, so practitioners can demonstrate that they have the skills required, and recruiters can take the guesswork out of the recruitment process, all backed up by our Open Badges program. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, great to have you with us. Uh, we've got a lot of people registered for today, so uh, looking forward to a, a, a great session. And uh, uh, I hope wherever you are in the world, you are keeping safe and well, and uh, life is uh, approaching uh, uh, something um, that one might consider normal. Um, uh, obviously, uh, our thoughts are still with the people of Ukraine right now. Uh, every time we do one of these every two weeks, I hope that I won't have to say this again, but um, still it goes on. So I'm sure your uh, thoughts and prayers are with them as, as mine are um, in this uh, terrible time for them. Um, and I'd also like to um, share a thought for our, our folks, um, quite different situation, but uh, we do have a team at the Open Group in, uh, in Shanghai who are going through a... Um, a difficult time right now as well with the with the pandemic restrictions. But we will move on to uh, to today's event, um, Talk It Tuesday. And um, some of you will have uh, joined us before. Um, hopefully, we've got some new folks uh, as well as uh, those who've been with us before. And um, I'm delighted to introduce our main speaker today, um, colleague of mine now for uh, over a decade. Um, uh, Roberto Severo. So since 2012, Roberto has been the country manager for the Open Group in, in Brazil. Um, um, and the Open Group, as you know, develops and maintains the TOGAF standard, among other things. Um, for example, Archimate and the Open Agile Architecture Standard, IT for IT, Open Process Automation Standard, um, OSDU, and many others. And uh, Roberta helps us get the word out for, uh, about all of those in the Brazil area. And um, he's added some other, other territories, as you'll see, um, where there is interest in our work. Um, before coming to us, um, Roberto worked in the software development industry with his technical background um, for over 10 years and, the, and in the financial services area for more than 10 years too. And he's been with us for 10 years. So we obviously do things in, uh, in lumps of 10, Roberto, don't you? Um, but it's uh, great to have you here today. You're certified in TOGAF and also currently the president of the Association of Enterprise Architects Brazil chapter. And uh, today, Roberto is going to talk about the principles of, of an EA framework and the importance of adopting the TOGAF standard. So a warm virtual welcome, uh, Toolkit Tuesday welcome, please, for Roberto Severo. Over to you, sir. Great to see you again. Hi, Steve. Thank you very much. It's very good to see you again. Thank you for all the audience. Um, OK, uh, I'm going to share my screen. And thank you for the introduction as well. And today we're going to speak about uh, EA let's try to define enterprise architecture what is a framework of enterprise architecture and why TOGAF is so important in this space so um let's start with the agenda uh no news here i just talked about this we're going to talk about the ea frameworks and why TOGAF let's move over so um it's very good to define very well what is enterprise architecture, uh, especially if in some idioms, enterprise, it's 
a very difficult word to translate into. Uh, and Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese, is one of those uh, idioms that we don't have a precise translation for enterprise. Uh, we just have something like corporate or something like company or organization, but not enterprise, which is a bigger thing. So, uh, let's take a look at um, a simple diagram here. This diagram I used to show to represent the enterprise. So, the enterprise, as you can see, is the outer circle, the blue one. So, the organization, the company, is within the enterprise. So, uh, normally, we think, uh, especially in, in Brazil, we think enterprise as a company, but it's more than a company. So uh, I put some 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 players in inside this circle. So we have the board uh, in the middle, where the strategy uh, it's good to come from. Um, well, after that we have the primary business units, uh, which is very important for the business to exist, like sales, customer services, and whatever. Then we have supporting business units. Yes, IT is one of those. Uh, uh, HR, finance, that supports the business. And you can see a dotted circle that uh, comprises the organization. And enterprise is much bigger than the organization, as you can see uh, in the blue circle. So the in, what, what is in, in the enterprise? Which players are there? Where well, we have clients, we have business partners, so we have government agencies, regulators that touches our business into the organization. So uh, it's clearly bigger than the organization. So this defines the enterprise. And a good framework should look at the enterprise, not only at the company, should look at the culture as well. But let's move a little bit forward. So, um, here uh, you can see the typical layers of uh, an, uh, an organization, okay? You have three layers, basically, okay? Very simplistic way to show it. Uh, the strategic one, the tactical one, and the operational one, okay? Uh, and everything must come from uh, the organization mission, vision, and values. Otherwise, something isn't right. Uh, and when we speak and we talk about enterprise architect, all the layers must connect all the layers must communicate with each other otherwise you don't have ea and a good framework of enterprise architecture like togaf standard uh, look at the strategic level statical layer and the operational layer so let's let's take uh, let me use an, an analogy to represent that. How the strategic influences uh, tactical and operational? I, I, I took the football analogy. Uh, I could take any any other qualitative game, but you know, in Brazil, football is very popular. Yeah. So um, when the coach plans a game in, in the dress room and show uh, to and, and show that to to the players uh, he does something like the the left hand square and say how they see how they see how to fulfill uh, the goal and and passes this to the players however however when the game, when the match begins, what happens? Happens 
here what we have in the right hand square uh, not exactly the way the coach said but it's completely normal it's completely normal why because the strategy is something more solid it's something uh if if you allow me to say it's something to keep on the horizon you must look at the strategy but the way to achieve the strategy could be very different in many different aspects okay so uh, i i would say that strategy is something more solid and the tactics and execution are more fluid okay and this is totally normal so uh but always as i said before the execution must be aligned with the strategy okay always the strategy must be connected with the execution okay sometimes it happens to to be differently but but it's okay uh if someone if the coach is seeing that or managing that and at the end of one interaction what is an interaction in a football game it's the first 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 half he stops the game go back to the dress room and maybe changes a little bit the strategy and passes that to the players and the players go back to the to the field and try to do it all over again starting another interaction did you think like that uh, in a football game you have two interactions the first half and the second half so you have the change the, 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 the opportunity to change the strategy and and then go back and try to achieve the goal really the goal uh, so uh, just to wrap this up I put it in the two squares where where they 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 play their their, their role so we have the planning in a strategic area in the strategic layer and how it really goes uh, in the management and operational production infrastructure uh, and speaking on TOGAF is standard uh, we are talking about interactions okay so once we understand what EA enterprise architecture is uh, what is a framework why a framework why TOGAF standard so uh, I start with the question to you guys this is the question why is it better to learn from others mistakes uh, and you're going to see that framework it's all about that too so the answer is very very simple because you don't have enough time in your life to make all the mistakes oh bingo so uh, when you learn something that went wrong you don't do it again you don't have to go through this and prove yourself that that is wrong so you you can learn from other mistakes and other successes too and time is precious and, and, and if you incur in many mistakes you can comprise your company and lose some market competitiveness for instance so why i'm talking about this because frameworks can be seen as best practice put on paper in a qualitative way in a qualitative way uh, i'm talking about the open group process of of developing and evolving uh, standards because the qualitative does everything uh, and it's based on best practice framework have artifacts to organize organize help and guide architects work so uh, 
When you see, for instance, Togaf, we have more than 25 years of maturity of mistakes put on paper, involvement, the market, it's something, something organic. So uh, the framework must go along with with the development of the market, the needs, market needs changes time to time. So um, let's go through the point, uh, directly to the point. So why the TOGAF standard? Well, I can put some, 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 some things that I can observe in my 10 years of open group and, and I watch the market too in Brazil and some countries now in, in Latin America. And well, TOGAF is built in collaboration along members, company, the open group ought to have a, a very good process and a very good environment to make those companies work as member together. So we have a big community of practitioners that always producing material. Uh, it has a practical uh, uh, approach. We, 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 we don't idealize problems uh, and, and address those problems. We, we're really addressing needs from the market. Um, the TOGAF standard look at business and IT. Uh, its reference model helps practitioners to not start from scratch. What I said, you don't have to incur in the same mistakes uh, others uh, incurred. Okay. Let's talk about ADM, which is the heart. I I I, I like to say it's heart of TOGAF. ADM. It's a very a proven method to streamline your AA initiative. It's modular. You don't have to run through every phase in the ADM. When you begin, you take, for example, okay, let's start in IT. So you can run the CND phase and improve something in your organization and move on to the next step and start a new interaction, maybe with more phases. So we have a lot of consulting and training companies ready to train and, and give help to companies in the market. Uh, we have a, a market proven certification program for people. And there's a lot of documentation from the open group and third parties. So uh, wrapping up, uh, I would say that uh, if you use uh, a proper EA framework like TOGAF, you are ready to achieve resources maximization, language isonomy, so you, you have uh, the same language between all the layers, you improve your governance, you control enterprise debt, which is very rarely controlled, and at the end of the day, you can effectively connect, make a connection between your strategy and execution. Well, uh, that's what I have for today. I hope it helped. Of course, it's a very basic content uh, and there's a lot of things to read about it. And I invite you to find documents in our library. You can access point your camera to the first uh, queue, uh, I'm, I'm losing the word. <laughs> you, you, you point the camera at the graphic over there. And if you want to contact me, you can point the camera on the QR code uh, beside of my name. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, and thank you, Steve, it's over back to you. That's right. You caught it right at the end there about a QR code. QR exactly. code. Right. What you were looking Sorry. for. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for um, for running us through that. It's great to get a refresh on uh, on, on EA and why why we do this and why it helps so much. Um, interesting comment in the chat while you were while you were speaking that uh, yes, the world would actually be a better place if people learn from their mistakes. But unfortunately, that's not always the case. <laughs> Make the same ones over and over sometimes. But um, uh, yeah. 
personally, I love the I love the football analogy. I mean, what else would I expect from uh, a Brazilian? But uh, back to the world's number one team, I note. But um, uh, I, I think that's a great uh, demonstration of how that you know, you can have a have a strategy, have a plan, and then uh, in reality, it looks uh, quite different um, after a short period of time. As I say, any any plans old as soon as it's uh, as soon as it's created, pretty much. So one um, one question I, um, that came in um, was um, where you get these variations from your specifically this question is around IT strategy. So things change. How do you map those? How do you use the framework to cope with the changes of, in reality? Uh, well, this is a very good question. Uh, actually, in, in Togaf, we have some artifacts where you you really can... Uh, if you see in the middle of Togaf, of course, you know it, uh, you have requirements and you, you watch the market and you have artifacts, you have interactions that you run time to time and one interaction after the other one uh, you can observe changes in the market and you have to document it very well between the, the interactions and uh, I don't know if it answers your questions uh, should I be more specific? No, I think I mean that, that that certainly goes it get goes by the way. I mean, the, the, you know, all I would add to that is that there's the, you know the um, the the ADM that you called out as the the heart of TOGAF. And, you know, it's an iterative yeah. process, and you mm -hmm. you know as changes happen, you can keep it's one of the beauties of it. Yeah. Um, keep it's not it's not set in stone. So um, so it's great. So um, another another question. Um, you've worked with TOGAF for a while now. Um, have you seen certain size of organizations that are more likely to adopt it or certain industries for example uh -huh. uh, actually uh, you can apply TOGAF anywhere uh, uh, as, as, as far as you have a strategy and execution you can use TOGAF to connect them uh, anywhere anywhere and when I say anywhere it's uh, any kind of organization and even in our lives, we have some goals, we have some execution. So, <laughs> it's, it's, I'm not kidding. You can use TOGAF in your lives to connect your execution to achieve your goals. Uh, just, just have to adapt it. And so, so the answer, Steve, it's no. Uh, there's no restriction. Uh, any size of company. Sometimes uh, people think that TOGAF is something so big. They have to have uh, so big effort, so many resources available, uh, but it's not. You, you can do it in one person company, uh, 100,000 persons company, and anywhere you have execution and strategy. Right. Okay. Um... So another thing that we that uh, I've seen before um, this question um, uh, relates to obviously TOGAF isn't the only game in town when it comes to um, enterprise architecture standards or or even um, uh, you know other standards you might use with it. So you might have you might work in an industry that has a uh, has a standard developed exclusively for them, like like Etom in the um, in the telecom world, for example. Um, does that mean that TOGAF isn't for them or is, is it for them too? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, Steve. Uh, this is something uh, we, we have lots of questions on that. Okay, I'm using a, a specific framework for my industry. Uh, do I have to replace it with TOGAF? And the question is a big no. No, right. no, you, you, you don't have. Uh, TOGAF... Uh, can can be a com complement the the whole story of your enterprise not replace and i used to say when i, I was a consultant i used to say uh, don't replace what it's working keep it and add something else and togaf could be something else uh, uh, to fulfill the gaps 
it's one of the things we've always always said is it's it's togaf and not togaf or um uh, yeah perfect, yeah, perfect. absolutely absolutely true um it's 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 there to be tailored to your own organization so um absolutely absolutely, absolutely. right so um one more question it's a it's a cheeky one but um um let's um Let's ask it anyway. There won't be time to give a long version, a, a long answer. But um, <laughs> have you got examples from your experience where using the Togo framework has failed? And if so, why? Yes, I, I did. I did. I mean, OK, OK. Uh, I, I used to play the role of enterprise architect since 2001. And we we started in a very big bank in Sao Paulo. Uh, we we started using Togaf, and and the one mistake we, we we have done was to try to run the full ADM and have everything you know building the ivory tower before put put something some things in place and give quick wins to the sponsors and i think this is one of the most big mistakes you can do is to try to build an ivory tower before starting uh, delivering results from your ea uh, ea uh, initiative and you can use any frameworks in, in, in that case in that bank we, we were using togaf and you try to build something close to perfection and that doesn't exist do what you you can do and deliver yeah and even more important nowadays in a in an you know agile world everyone needs uh, needs everything faster and and uh, it's you've got to got to deliver results to the business as uh, perfect perfect absolutely and do what you can do what you can yes I can hear I can hear it now. One of our uh, fairly regulars on uh, on Toolkit Tuesday, Terry Blevins, uh, always ends his uh, little videos with uh, um, "Architect for Enterprise Value." That's what it's all about. Um, and if you're not doing right. that, then you're going to struggle. So, um, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. we'll leave it. We'll leave it there um, on Togaf. But there was a question came in given your your the other hats that you wear uh, about the AEA. Could you say something about uh, the, the specific question is, um, uh, what's the role of the AEA in the EA mm -hmm. ecosystem? Are there chapters sure. all over the world, for example? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am the, 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 the I, I, I am the chair of AEA Brazil chapter, and yes, the AEA it's it's about architects. When when we talk, and, and this is a very big confusion people do. Uh, there's a lot of individuals that come to me and say, how can I become a member of the open group? And I have to say, no, no, you can't do that. Your company can do that, but you can't do that. And there was a, a gap in the market. So architects wanted to join and to get engaged. So AEA is that place. It's where the architects can get engaged and get some uh, information from architects to architects and this is a very nice environment and there's chapters all over the board we have one chapter here in brazil and uh, we are relaunching the chapter with much more value more a forum and articles more technical articles and and we are not only talking about frameworks we are talking about the profession of an architect and this is very important absolutely i mean it's it's in its intent is to be a professional body for architects isn't it so um, yeah. So yeah. yeah roberto and, uh, with respect for everyone's time we will leave it there but um very much appreciate your thoughts today and uh, some nice messages of thanks in the in the chat so uh, thank you for joining us today Roberto Severo. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Have a nice so day. Just before we uh, we close out, folks, um, thank you for uh, attending today. Thank you for the questions uh, and the comments in the chat. Uh, May 17th is the next Toolkit Tuesday, and we have a special guest. Um, I know who it is, but we're going to um, uh, share that between now and then. Thank you for attending today. Keep well wherever you are, and see you again soon. Bye-bye.